There's no doubt about it. Today, we took an L at the hands of the gerontocracy. But this is crypto and Cardano, and we're still going to win the whole thing. Ready? Let's go. Right now, a lot of people are looking for an enemy they can blame this thing on. But I think they're not realizing that the legislative process is a wild and chaotic organism unto itself and a lot of different people and groups, none of whom are looking out for crypto, played a role in getting us here. Here's where it started. Back on August 1st, Coin Center's Jerry Brito made this tweet basically saying, hey, we've got the final bill text now. It's a lot better than where it started. Look, here's the two side by side. What we had previously and what we actually got in the final bill text. Here's what they started with. Any person who, for consideration, regularly provides any service or application, even if non-custodial, to facilitate transfers of digital assets, including any decentralized exchange or peer-to-peer -peer marketplace, specifically, explicitly, including DEXs, and they even had this language, even if non-custodial in here, to make sure there was no way that DEXs could escape from this definition. This is the definition of, this is, this is part of a definition of a broker. I haven't heard anybody say that this original language wasn't heavily influenced by the Treasury Department, which is run by 74-year-old Janet Yellen, who just received over $7 million in speaking fees from big banks between 2018 and 2020. Then we had this eight-day period of warring amendments where a pro-crypto bipartisan group of senators tried to get this amendment passed that would specifically exclude from the definition of brokers, parties that are just validating transactions in the ledger, selling hardware or software wallets, or developing digital assets or protocols, as long as the people using them are not customers of the developers. This piece, part C, is going to become important. The other group who is slightly less pro-crypto, they proposed this amendment and they revised it like twice in one day to finally get here. But this amendment would exclude those who were validating ledger transactions as long as they were engaging in mining or staking. And it would also, it would also exclude those who are selling hardware or software wallets. Notably missing from this is that part C, no protections for the developer of digital assets or protocols. I've been calling them the less pro-crypto group of senators, but really what I suspect is the case is that this group of senators knew that that developer section was a Rubicon for Treasury. They knew that that was a line in the sand that Treasury was not going to let anybody cross. Everybody kept reporting, even including a reporter from Politico here, that somehow Portman, who was a part of the Portman Warner Cinema Group, who uh, kept proposing the amendment without the developer language. Everybody kept reporting that somehow Portman was making comments that he was totally cool with the developer section. But when you looked at his actual comments in writing and you actually watched them live, he never mentioned developers in this general sense that the other group of senators, Wyden, Toomey, and Lummis, had included de developers in that section C. The political reporter even came back and corrected her post after I pointed out that Portman never actually said that. But despite all of that, when it finally came down to Wyden, Toomey, Lummis, and Portner, Portman Warner Cinema compromising, creating this compromise addendum today, it looked like this. You'll notice no section C, no mention of developers people kind of tried to tout this section right here as somehow covering developers. Any person who for consideration regularly effectuates transfers of digital assets on behalf of another person, but you'll notice no actual language that might protect developers. At this point, everybody started arguing that somehow somewhere in this language, especially this on behalf of another person part, you know, somehow there was an argument that if some some developer built something and deployed it and walked away you know maybe they weren't doing that on behalf they maybe they weren't effectuating transfers of digital assets on behalf of another person and some of the senators like lummis even tried to build a legislative record 
around a legislative history around the idea that developers were somehow somehow included in this in uh, in the exclusions in in all of this language. But you'll notice developers not actually included in any meaningful way, similar to the subsection C that Wyden, and Toomey and Lummis had been pushing for all along. This was bad enough. The lack of a subsection C or any mention of an exclusion for developers, but by this time there had already been an intervening circumstance that made things worse. The compromise amendment only really happened because of this guy. We had the Wyden Toomey Lummis Amendment, which had that section C, and we had the Portman Warner Cinema Amendment with no section C, and everybody wanted to have an actual vote. Just have a vote on the amendments and see which way the Senate would go. But Chuck Schumer, 70-year-old Chuck Schumer, blocked the vote because he said he would only allow the vote on the amendments, or at least the understanding was he would only allow the vote on the amendments if senators would agree not to go through the post the 30 hour post cloture period to review the amendments because he wanted to move on to other legislation. So he blocked any voting on amendments. This meant that the only chance for an amendment to get passed would be for it to pass by unanimous consent during that 30 hour period where the senators are supposed to consider and review bills before they actually vote on them. So suddenly there wasn't gonna be a vote. There obviously had to be a compromise. So Wyden, Toomey, Lummis and Portman Warner Cinema had to get together, come up with one compromise amendment that would make everybody happy. You've already seen that was this one with no section C about developers. We even got a little confirmation as this theory as to why there could be no section C. Toomey and Lummis gave a press conference this morning. And in that press conference at the very, very end, you can see it in the video at the very end, somebody asks him, hey, uh, the White House has taken issue with you know these amendments over the last few days. Are they gonna be cool with this compromise amendment? And Toomey responded, yes, we negotiated this with Treasury. He's saying they negotiated the compromise agreement with Treasury. This was only confirmed in the press release about the compromise amendment when they said, we've worked with the Treasury to clarify the underlying text, and ensure that those who are not acting as brokers will not be subject to the bill's reporting requirements. And they left off and to make absolutely sure there's no mention of developers or that subsection C. That led legal commentators in the crypto space to make posts like this one. We need to have a longer conversation about why Congress is delegating its legislative power to unnamed, unelected officials in the Treasury Department. But of course, this issue wouldn't turn out to be the most problematic one of the day. Then it was finally time to go get unanimous consent for the compromise amendment. Toomey posted this. He went down there with Lummis and Portman and Toomey talked, Lummis talked, Portman talked, even Ted Cruz talked. He kind of signed on uh, later on in the process, the widen Toomey Lummis amendment. But when Cruz talked, there was the first sign that there might be trouble. He said he was suspecting that there was going to be an objection to the compromise amendment. This is a problem because this is unanimous consent. So you can't have any objections or it can't go forward because they weren't really in the regular voting time for amendments. Schumer had closed that down because he didn't, he wanted to move on to later legislation. He said, if senators were going to require the full 30 hours so that they could sort of add, you know, senators who are opposed to the infrastructure bill could advertise the high price tag of the infrastructure bill, then he wasn't going to allow any amendments. That meant we were now in this post cloture 30 hour period where things can only happen by unanimous consent. So if there was going to be an objection, that was going to be a big problem. It turned out that problem had a name. Let me introduce you to 87 year old Senator Shelby. This dude was born in 19. 
34. The Wright brothers were flying about three decades before this guy was born. We barely had airplanes when this dude was born. <laughs> Senator Shelby, Senator Shelby decided when, when unanimous consent was, uh, was requested, they had to ask all the senators, are there any objections? Senator Shelby said, Hey, I'm reserving the right to object. Will you tack my $50 billion defense spending amendment onto your amendment? Toomey, it sounds like Toomey knew, maybe knew this was coming, or he knew that if he didn't allow it to be tacked onto the uh, crypto amendment, the compromised crypto amendment, that they wouldn't have unanimous consent and it was a done deal. So Toomey accepted the request to tack Shelby's defense spending amendment onto the crypto compromise amendment. Instantly, 79 year old Bernie Sanders jumped up and he objected to this new combination of the crypto compromise amendment and this $50 billion defense spending amendment. The parliamentary procedure was a little bit confusing here, which led some people to mistakenly understand that Bernie Sanders was objecting to the crypto compromise amendment. When in fact, there's no reason to believe that he was objecting to anything other than an additional unforeseen $50 billion in defense spending. At this point, Ted Cruz tried to run an amendment that would have struck all of the tax reporting provisions for crypto from the infrastructure bill. He asked for unanimous consent. Of course, our favorite 87 year old Senator Shelby did his favorite trick again demanding that his $50 billion defense spending amendment be tacked on. Cruz said that while he would love to spend that money on our military, he knows that the opposing party would just object. So he refused to include Shelby's, <laughs> Shelby's defense spending amendment. And of course, Shelby objected again. So neither amendment was able to achieve unanimous consent. Everybody's focus shifted to the House and immediately a few of the chairs of the blockchain caucus in the House of Representatives started sending uh, a letter to all of the, uh, of the reps in the House about how they needed to fix this crypto pay for provision. That's a battle we'll get to fight, I believe in September. I think that's when the House comes back in September. And over there, we'll get to face 81-year-old Nancy Pelosi. Depending on how it does in the legislative process, we might also be contending with 71-year-old Don Byers' comprehensive crypto bill. I think this one is really going to get people in the crypto space excited, not in a good way. This is a comprehensive bill we've covered in detail on this channel. Nobody's been paying attention to it yet because of the all of the all the activity over the infrastructure bill. But this one is really going to freak people out if it starts looking like this one's going to pass. You've probably noticed the theme here. All of this was made possible by gerontocracy. We're dealing with a government by senior citizens. Our oldest U.S. president ever, Joe Biden, 78 years old, appoints Janet Yellen, 74 year, years old, to head the Treasury. Janet Yellen, her Treasury Department at least, decides to run some legislation on cutting edge technology. That legislation gets moved around a little bit. They try to fix it, but they can't really fix it because apparently, according to reports, Yellen's over there on the Senate, uh, over there talking to senators, trying to make sure that that subsection C doesn't make it in there. Maybe, we don't know, but I think probably. Then we have 70-year-old Chuck Schumer actually disallows any voting on the amendments. So we can't have voting on the amendments. Now it has to pass by unanimous consent. Everybody knows how difficult it is to get unanimous consent in any government, let alone the US Senate right now on anything at all controversial. And it turns out it's not even controversial. Everybody agrees on the compromise amendment. But then all of a sudden we have a dispute over completely unrelated defense spending between 87 year old Senator Shelby, 
79 year old Senator Sanders completely bombs the whole thing. Now we get to go back over to the house and deal with 81 year old Nancy Pelosi as speaker of the house. <laughs> and this doesn't even take into account the fact that we haven't dealt with the Don Beyer bill yet. That hasn't even like really entered the uh, greater crypto consciousness yet. It's as if crypto is a competitor on American Gladiators, only instead of the show taking place in the 90s, the Gladiators are all 90. This is the system. It's not really the individuals. We've seen individuals on both sides of the political spectrum have kind of contributed to getting us to where we found ourselves today. Um, I don't think it could have happened without people from both sides doing certain things. And it's really the system altogether. They're all kind of doing their, their little thing, their little, you know, their little uh, cellular piece of this organism. They were all playing their role, but the system, the legislative process on its own is this unwieldy organic organism that does unpredictable things sometimes. But the way it all turned out wasn't very pro crypto here. It wasn't, didn't exactly go in our favor. And I think one of the biggest sticking points still is really DeFi. It's pretty obvious that treasury didn't want that subsection C. And I think that's all about DeFi, which makes me, I know I say this all the time, but it makes me very happy we're in Cardano and not some other ecosystems that are already completely reliant on DeFi. Cardano has branched out in a lot of different directions and it's setting up a lot of use cases that don't necessarily have anything to do with DeFi. I think some other projects have already sort of suckled at the utter of DeFi for so long, there's no way they're going to be able to pull themselves away. But I think Cardano can, it already has the foundation to go in a lot of different directions. And that built-in anti-fragility is going to be a massive strength if this is really what it looks like, the beginnings of a huge crackdown on DeFi. Talk to you tomorrow.